I'm Joshua Bardwell. I need my mic in front of me. That's important. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. You're watching this video because you need to know how to update the firmware on your FreeSky receiver. You probably bought either this radio, the FreeSky X9 Lite, or this radio, the FreeSky X Lite Pro. And the problem is these radios are the first two to support FreeSky's new access error protocol, but they don't yet sell a receiver that supports the access protocol right out of the box. So you've got a receiver like the FreeSky RXSR is the one we're going to be working with, and it doesn't work with your fancy new radio. I'm going to show you how to get it to work. Let's do it. So here's the receiver we're going to be working with in this video. This is the FreeSky RXSR, and I've picked it because I think it's the one you're most likely to be using as one of my viewers. But you can flash a whole bunch of different receivers to the new Access Protocol firmware. Um, the full list is right here at this URL. You scroll down here here is the list of receivers that currently support it and i suggest that you if you don't see your receiver on that list go to the url maybe they've added it for example at this time the xm plus is not on the list and that's a pretty popular one i bet they've added it by the time you're watching this video sometime in the future why do you got to flash this firmware in the first place well these new radios support a fancy new protocol called access which has a whole bunch of features that is not the point of this video to go into why the access protocol is good i'm gonna make that video and if i've made it there will be a link down in the video description suffice it to say if you have an access radio you probably want to use the access protocol but the problem is that this receiver does not come compatible with the access pro why don't they just sell it with the access firmware on it i don't know but they don't you got to do the steps in this video to make it access compatible so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download this firmware we're going to go to this url which is in the video description below just go down there and click that link we're going to go to firmware download we're going to find our receiver it is the rxsr and we're going to download this firmware to the hard drive the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put that firmware on the SD card that is in this radio. It didn't come with an SD card. N neither did that one. They don't come with an SD card anymore. Damn. If you've already got an SD card in your radio with the OpenTX SD card contents on it, take it out. And if you have a brand new radio, I'm going to walk you through the steps to get that ready. So you're going to need a micro SD card of 32 gig or smaller. If you have a larger one sitting around, it actually doesn't work with the radios. They can't read it. You don't need 32 gig. We're not going to put that much data on it, but these days it's kind of hard to find cards. 8 gig might be the smallest you could find. That'll be fine. If you don't have one, you're going to need to go get one. We're going to take that card. We're going to put it in the card reader on our computer, and we're going to need to format that card and this is going to erase all the data on the card. So under Windows, I'm going to find that card in the uh, Windows Explorer. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose Format. And I'm going to format it as FAT32. That's what we're going to need to do. I'm also going to change the label to Tyrannus underscore SD. And we're going to format. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what version of OpenTX is on the radio. And in order to do that, we're going to turn the radio on. And on the Tyrannus X9 Lite and most of the other Tyrannus radios, I'm going to long press the menu key to get to Radio Setup. And then I'm going to press Page until I get to Version. And it'll show the firmware version that's on the radio. And the firmware version here is 2.3.0. Now, your firmware version may not match that depending on when you're watching this video, but that's the information you need. Firmware 230. The next thing we have to do is download the SD card contents to put onto the SD card. This has nothing to do with the firmware update of the, of the receiver. It's just a step you have to do when you first get your radio. A little bit annoying that FreeSky didn't do it for you. We're going to do that by going to the FreeSky website, go to products, and we'll pick the radio that we've got here. So this is the X9 Lite, and we'll go to download. It takes us to the downloads page and right here, SD card contents, and we'll hit download. Now that's going to download a zip file to the hard drive. If you have OpenTX version 223 or earlier, 
or if you have flashed the radio yourself with OpenTX versus the firmware that came on the radio, you may need to go to the OpenTX website to get your SD card contents instead of the FreeSky website. The OpenTX website is open-tx.org and on the front page we can look for the version that we've got, for example, OpenTX 223 and down at the bottom we have the option to download the SD card content for 223. We'll do that by just clicking and you'll pick the radio that you've got here, X9D, X-Lite, etc. And the SD card contents will be there, the same zip file. We have downloaded uh, the RXSR firmware. We've downloaded the SD card contents. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that zip file. And I'm going to open up my SD card, Tyrannus SD, that I just formatted. It's empty, it's blank. And I'm gonna take all of this stuff from this zip file, and I'm just gonna copy it to the SD card. This is a step where a lot of people do this, like, yeah, okay, I get it. And some people, maybe if you're a little new with computers or maybe a little not the best with zip files, get a little confused, but you just need to make that happen. Take, what, take the contents of the zip, don't just put the zip file on your SD card. You gotta extract the zip file to the SD card. So all these EEPROM firmware, etc., gets put on the zip file. Okay, good. Got put on the SD card. You know what I'm doing. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the access firmware, which is also in a zip file, and I'm going to put that in the firmware folder on the SD card. Boom. Okay, good. We're ready to go. Before we flash the receiver with the new access firmware, there's something you gotta know. You need to know that once you flash a receiver to the access firmware, you can't go back the other way. So I'm gonna take my SD card and I'm gonna put it in the radio. I'm gonna show you on the X9 Lite, but then I'll show you on the X Lite Pro if you have one. The key, it's almost exactly the same, but just slightly different. I'm gonna turn it on. Okay. Welcome to OpenTX. Oh, see, if you just got the SD card, you didn't have any audio callouts before. Now you have audio callouts. Those are on the SD card. So, bonus. Then, the next thing I need to do is take my RXSR, and it comes with this little servo plug, and this is specifically for updating the firmware. I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to plug that into the servo plug on the bottom of the radio. It's keyed. It's got a little tab here. It'll only go in one way. I'm going to plug that in. Okay. Nothing will happen. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pr long press the menu key to get to radio setup, then page to the SD card menu. Then I'm going to scroll down with the jog wheel to firmware. Click. I'm going to scroll down to the firmware that I want to flash. And there's two firmwares here. One is the F port firmware if you're going to be using the F port protocol. One is the S port firmware if you're going to use, be using S bus protocol. Um, if you're not sure which of those you want, I suggest the S port firmware. If you know what F port is and you want to use it, then you can flash that one. And if you don't know what F port is, I've got a video about what F port is and I'll put a link in the video description. So I'm going to flash the S port firmware. I'm going to long press the jog wheel. And this is important. You need to choose Flash S port. If you choose Flash internal module, you'll bork the radio. Not permanently. You'll flash the you'll flash the internal module with this receiver firmware, and that's not what you want to do. So, what we want to do is Flash S port, and that means flash to this little plug down here. And now, don't interrupt this. Notice that the receiver is on, the green light is blinking, and this is going to say writing, and we're just going to leave it until it's done. And when it's done, it will say flash successful, OK, and you are ready to proceed. On these radios, uh, the only difference is that to get to the radio setup menu, you long press left to get to radio setup, and then once to the right to get to the SD card menu, down to firmware, click the button, and then it's exactly the same. Long click on the firmware you want to flash and choose Flash S port. Well, there you go. Now your receiver has the new latest and greatest firmware. And if you are a new owner of one of these radios and you're just getting started with FreeSky Access, can I let you know that 
I'm actually working on a whole Free Sky Access playlist going through the new features of Free Sky Access, how to use it, how to set it up, how to do the initial configuration of these radios, etc. I'll put links to all of that stuff down in the video description. Definitely go check that out. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and happy flying. Thank you.